Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great, kind of rushed through that how's everybody doing part. I do, I hope everybody's doing well. I'm great, hanging out in the grow space. It has been a really gloomy week. Normally I like to go outside and do activities this time of year for the vlogs. Helps have longer vlogs too, which people enjoy. But the weather's just been crap. I'm kind of pointing in this direction because there's a window over there, but you can't, you can't see out of it. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, the weather's just been real crummy this week. Cold, rainy. There's a really cute squirrel out there in the grass. I don't think you can see him. You see it? You kind of see the squirrel? He's over there. Hi today, it's like 60. It looks like it stopped raining. Can we go outside and do something? Maybe just for a minute? Maybe? I don't know. I was about to say we're gonna be hanging out here in the grow space. I have some repotting to do, but might be able to get outside for a little bit. And it, I have some planters that need some, some, what is this word? Zhuzh? Is that the thing? Those violas and pansies and things that need to get potted up into their spring containers. So that, let's do that. So it looks like there's a little dry spell. I'm seeing maybe some sun poking through the cloud. Nope, that's just a reflection from the grow lights. That was wishful thinking. Going to get the McDowell philodendron repotted. I need to water, but I'm not gonna, I don't think I'll bore y'all with the watering process. That's just standing around putting a hose at pots. That, that can't be very entertaining. Okay, managed to gather the things to bring outside. I don't know how long it's, I'm not anywhere near the camera, by the way. I hope you're enjoying this shot of whatever I set it down next to. I think that's just the table. <clears throat> Finish up the umbrella planter, but there's an issue. It's, it's not looking too hot. I have some explaining to do here because like, that's pretty bad. First, may as well come around, grab the annuals, which are just, they're looking great, aren't they? It has not been warm. Ooh. Smells so good though, that Alobularia. Even though it's looking crummy from the cold, still smells fantastic. Hey Tobes, you gonna say hi? Come here Toby, Toby. Nothing? Toby. And you go baby, you wanna come inside? You wanna go inside? Come on. It's all wet and cold out here. Do you wanna stay outside? Wouldn't think he'd wanna hang out out here cause well, it's all wet and gloomy, but that's kind of a lab's favorite thing. You like it wet and gloomy, don't you, Toby? All right, you can stay out. You don't have to go in. Guarantee you the second I sit down at the table, he's going to walk over that door and be like, hey, let me in there. Uh, you had your chance, Toby. You had your chance. Come over here. Come on. Over. Come on. Come on. Good boy. <laughs> yeah, you managed to figure out how to get past the umbrella. So smart. Such a smart dog, Toby. He has very much been enjoying all of his Toby time with his younger brother being off at day school. And I miss having Turbo around, but it's only one more week and he's done. So that's been interesting. Never talked about that, did we? I don't think so. Talk about it while I get this spruced up here. So Turbo, if you don't know, is my younger dog. He's like um, 18, 19 months old maybe. The great dog, very well behaved, but he's also gigantic. I don't, why is this thirsty? It's been raining for three days straight. 106 pounds. I've trained with that dog a ton. Just one, because I prefer a well behaved dog and because he's so big, he could very easily hurt someone without trying like just being playful he could knock somebody over small children that sort of thing but the latest challenge i've had with training him really he doesn't even need that much training at this point it's just a matter of reinforcing what he's already been taught but i haven't been able to socialize him around big groups of dogs that's a tricky thing to do he's just so big i take him to parks and things like that and people are afraid of him because like, he's 106 pounds so I, I get it that also sucks for turbo he just wants to run around and play with his fellow dog friends but just isn't able to really do it so i enrolled him at with a, a local training group where they take the dogs in during the daytime it's basically it's like daycare plus training for the dogs type of training where I was able to say to the trainers, like, here's what I'm hoping to accomplish here, what needs to get done. And they're like, oh yeah, that's no big deal. Essentially just need to get them to uh, learn to listen <laughs> when there's a lot of chaos going on, meaning lots of other dogs running around or perhaps just lots of noise being outside, just teaching them to kind of just chill out. So that's what's been going on with Turbo from eight to four every day. He's basically just playtime with a trainer. 
he's doing really well with it. Spend a lot of time training service dogs. Not that he's being trained as a service dog, but they're following a lot of the same patterns, trying to get him to be able to basically hang out in the front of the training facility. I almost said store. It's not a store. So he's only been in for a week and a half at this point, and he is already hanging out in the front of the play of the training place with the dogs that are training for service. So they have like cots set up where the dogs can just basically lounge around all day long and he's doing great with it. He isn't able to pull it off all day long yet, but he's going longer and longer every day. So it's not like he's sitting in a crate. He's able to watch people come and go because they also have a grooming department there. So he's seeing a lot of other dogs, just a lot of different people and learning to not react to those people. That's the main thing. It's the main reason he's there. It's one of the things I love about Toby. Toby, he's had lots of training over the years and I trained with him pretty much nonstop as a puppy so that I would be able to take him pretty much anywhere and have him around anyone and any other dog. And that's been the case with him. He's never been aggressive ever. I've never heard that dog growl. That's not true. He growled one time at a horse of all things. Oh, and a deer. He's growled at horses and deer. Never a human or a dog. And part of that's luck. Part of that's disposition. Turbo's not a big growl or at least not in the, like an aggressive growl so he's out and about building confidence with all this stuff going on around him at the training facility and making lots of dog friends he's been doing great no aggression issues at all so it's been really good for him but i do miss having him around during the daytime it's only for three weeks three weeks isn't a ton that is a really pretty viola i have to remember to get him up close to that one when i'm done filling this thing in it's kind of tricky finding training for him because he already does all the stuff that local trainers do i mean not everything like i haven't taught him to like distinguish between yellow and blue frisbees but i don't i could give it if he does that but what does that mean oh yeah i was talking about growling so he's not much of a growler but he uh, randomly starts barking at unexpected noises which there's not much you can do about that just basically have to stay calm and remember that dogs feed off of our energy so just act like whatever it is that's freaking him out is no big deal if there's something going on outside and he's been barking and acting a fool then usually i'll just say to him what is it go check it out it's like get out of here don't don't come to me for comfort go figure it out which has worked surprisingly well with him just basically saying okay you're you're anxious and you don't know what you're seeing or what you're hearing go check it out you're allowed to go check it out you can explore that's made a very 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 big difference but he's also a very vocal player when that dog is playing, it sounds like a dog fight. He's not fighting, but it's what it sounds like. So that's been the other thing than why he needs to learn to listen when he's playing with other dogs, because I have to step in sometimes and say, okay, bring it in. That's what I always say, bring it in. When I say bring it in, he comes to me and he lies down. He's been doing pretty well at that. A few weeks ago, he was out here playing with the senior dog and the puppy and he really balanced his play really well he was very gentle with the puppy he was very gentle with the senior and that's not how he plays with his cousin who's a ridgeback they play completely different it's it is intense when those two get playing but they're both about the same age so we don't worry about them hurting each other if they're good with each other and for the most part listen while they're playing i don't really think that this needs it but i'm going to try see if I can't squeeze some lobulary in here just a few of them I'm trying to get in there and stretch this apart enough so I can get these root masses to fit in there I don't want to push them down too much the lobularia come apart very easily when they're this small you don't want to have to squeeze too much either because then you're just going to compact the root ball yeah that's good that'll do maybe I can get another one in over here I think it's important that I have enough annual color in here because the daffodils, well, they're already almost done. As you can see, the hyacinths, they'll hold on for another week or two. And then what's left in this container is going to be left up to the violas and the lobularia here. So I need to make sure that I have enough of each one of those. So I want to make sure that there's at least three of those lobularias so that there's one in each little segment of the table here so they can be visible from everywhere i might be able to get four in here you think i'm pushing it that might be pushing it but i'm gonna try the tight fit but managed to make it work if i can get one, it needs one right here but i don't know i don't see that happening yeah, 
Uh, maybe. Actually, having another root ball in here might help stabilize this hyacinth. This hyacinth right here is kind of loose. I did have to tear at the root ball, which don't usually like doing. This time of year, during the summer, I really don't care as long as it's not like 100 degrees outside. If it were 100 degrees outside, I would probably be avoiding doing planters altogether. There's a sweet spot, 60s to uh, upper 70s. That's normally a safe place to be if you have to tear the root balls up a little bit and you can water. <laughs> Make sure you keep them evenly moist and never let them dry out. All that stuff, they regain those roots pretty quickly as long as you're not going too hard at it. Not all plants are like that. Actually, the pansies and violas, they take a little bit longer. I've noticed if you have to pull too much from their roots, the lobularia should be fine especially some of the newer, more sturdy varieties, like the ones from Proven Winners. These are the, I keep wanting to say crystal mix, that's not what they are. Easter Bonnet. Is that not, it's not gonna show? You can kind of see it. Just a fun assortment of colors. I don't know much else what to say about the Easter Bonnet mix because there's no description. I think it's just gonna be your average alyssum. Probably, I'm guessing, six to 10 inches high and wide. More than likely, that's generally where most of them fall, unless you're talking about like the Snow Princess and White Knight and those ones from Proven Winners. But of the seed started ones, generally six to 10 inches, sometimes 12 to 14, that's about where these go. These might end up staying in these planters all year. I don't know, <laughs> probably not. I'll definitely want to do something more exciting, but if I do get a good amount of growth out of these, that would be nice. If even just for the fragrance. Okay, so here's what happened here. Right after, almost right after I planted this up, I ended up having to take it inside because of weather. That's why there's still no umbrella on the table because this has to go in the middle and the umbrella has to be put through it. Oh, and maybe you can look at this and imagine why I wouldn't want to have multiple attempts at getting the umbrella in and out of this thing. I really filled this in here, so it's going to be tricky to line the umbrella pole up to go through there. So I don't want to be taking the umbrella in and out with the bad weather. And uh, right after I planted this up, the weather just changed. We went from having a really warm late winter to it being pretty cold. Lots of lows in the upper 20s. And uh, the next few days, we're gonna have lows for a few days, right around 20 degrees for three nights in a row. So this is beautiful, but you're gonna have to take it inside, which is why this looks like this. It's actually been inside on a bookshelf for the last week and a half because I can't have daffodils anywhere within reach of one of my cats. He will destroy these things and they're really not good for cats. The only spot I could put it was where it wasn't getting much attention or love. But that's all right. The tetetets, which are the daffodils that are in here, they're really sturdy. So are the hyacinths. I can go through there and actually I might do that sooner than later. You can see here the bases of the flowers are swelling up. So I could go through wherever they're starting to swell. Like you know, I'll snap this off so you can see what I'm talking about. So on all the ones where the bases are swelling up, you can see this green swollen part down here. They're making some seeds. I don't know about growing the tete -tetes from seeds. That's something I've never tried. I'm not interested in it, so I'm not going to bother with that. I can cut all those off. Those are done. That means they've done their thing. And that'll allow more energy to go back to the plant with putting up more buds because there are still plenty of buds in there. And the hyacinth. Those, they're supposed to be pink, but they've been indoors, not getting the proper lighting. So ended up with white. It's also why I don't have nice deep greens in here because they weren't getting enough light. They're very stretched out. I had a really a really really inexpensive grow light above these and those don't do much hence why it, why it looks like this it's fine no regrets here i still have enjoyed the process <laughs> honestly that's a lot of what this planter was was i just needed to be outside and i needed to get my hands dirty and plant some things and i really like how this looks even with all the chaos behind it i do think a nice cleanup and then in about four days it'll be nice enough to have this outside hopefully for an extended period of time kind of unusual for things to get this cold this time of year, but it's also not. Fall's been worse than winter the last few years, so you just can't really say what's going to happen. You see how cute that file is? Look at that. Isn't it just precious? It's perfect. With that creamy orange color with the dots of purple on each side, and then the nice royal purple in the back. I like that. Very cheery and happy looking. And the rest of this, it's all right. Just took a quick break, was checking out the weather, so it's going to be two nights at 20 degrees. At most of what's in here, I wouldn't risk that with, just because of the flowers. The foliage would probably be fine on a lot of these, but buds, not so much. That might be pushing it. Well, that's 
definitely 20 degrees for a couple nights is definitely pushing it for the Wapil area. So as much as I would like to do more planters and more stuff out here, it just doesn't make sense. Not until the middle of next week. And then hopefully spring will be here. It's not unusual in St. Louis, actually very normal. Generally the last two weeks are like just totally flip flopped. Sometimes the week before spring will be really nice and mild. And then the week that spring starts, things get really unusually cold. The other way around, it'll be totally cold and then spring hits and it's just boom. I'm hoping that that's what's going to happen. The last few changeovers from seasons fall into winter was dreadfully cold. Like the last week, y'all remember, record breaking temps in most places, record breaking lows, destroyed the garden here just from three days of cold. But the rest of winter was very mild. It's one of the most mild winters we've had on record, except for those three or four days that destroyed everything. I'm not surprised that here we are moving into spring and there's gonna be about three or four days of very cold temperatures that I do not want to expose the plants to just because I'll be sacrificing some buds. I'm just thinking out loud here at this point about things I didn't even preface anybody to. I was going to work on a hanging basket, but what's the point? I'm just going to have to move it inside. May as well keep everything in their flats and it's easier to get them in that way. This is going to have to go back inside too, but it's supposed to stay in the 50s and low 60s today. Gonna give everything a water, and I have a pot here, over here, that I've grabbed to repot the McDowell in and go back into the grow space and do some stuff in there. And then I don't have to use this like creepy soft voice. I don't like talking like this, but it's so awkward filming out here during the springtime. I hate it. I absolutely hate it because there's what? One, two, three, four, five houses. The back of their homes look right into my yard. It's like I'm sitting on a stage and it, it just makes me very uncomfortable. A few weeks, the trees will flush out and that won't be a thing anymore and it'll be totally different. This time of year though, I do not enjoy it. And the pool's not going, so there's no, I'm used to there being background noise, water, something. We got the birds, that's nice. It's been pleasant, but it's not enough. I haven't opened up the pool yet because, well, that's, I just told y'all, it's supposed to be like 20 degrees. So what would the point of that be? Hopefully next week, I'll get that cover off. I might have to, because it's filling up with water and it's going to overflow. And get some more things done outside. For now, let's go back into the grow space. It's a nice looking pot, isn't it? I think the McDowell would look good in there. Might be too big though. I'm not sure. Hold on to that trash bag for later. That's what I was sitting on outside so that I didn't get my butt wet. Hey, pumpkin. Hey, buddy. You gonna say hi? No? You don't feel like it? Too good for the camera today. Too good for the camera. Always. Nothing unusual there. And Cosmo still hates the camera. Cool. I cannot wait for it to get nice outside. There's so much back here. I want to show everybody. I've been doing things. But we'll wait for the garden tour. Won't be far off. Maybe the next video, I'm not sure. If not, then it's going to be the one after that. I forgot my tripod, don't know where I'm going. Definitely gonna need that. Okay, think I'm ready to get this done, finally. There's, I'm always going back and forth on things. I really appreciate everybody's patience with me. I've been talking about repotting this thing for weeks now, if not months. Wait, do you see what the problem is here? This is the container that I figured would be perfect to put it in, and it would. McDowell philodendron, the D McDowell. It's a crawler. This would be great to go ahead and set this down to, I'm going to repeat that because my chair just made a farty sound and if it picked up on camera, I'm not, I'll probably leave it in. If it were to be planted in right here and have that go across, it's perfect. But size wise, I don't know. That might be too much of an upgrade, right? The thing is though, when using an aeroid mix, I don't worry as much anywhere near as often as much about over potting the plants only because the issue with repotting a plant into something that's too large is that all that moisture is going to run away from the root ball into all that loose soil and then the water just sits there there's no roots to pull it up from that fresh soil so you can end up rotting out your plant and then aeroid mix eh, it's not normally a problem depending on how much peat or cocoa nut core you have in there because there's so much air circulation in the container as it is but what it does mean is you end up having to water a lot more frequently, which with a philodendron doesn't mean much, at least not with a the McDowell. They're pretty typical philodendrons, very sturdy philodendrons that don't need a lot of babying. It's one of the reasons I like them so much, and they're beautiful. Not that you can tell. It's only put out one new leaf since I got it because it's in this tiny little pot. You can tell it's the nice, strong leaf. Those are its two shipping leaves that it's held onto over there. But the one leaf that it has opened up, 
looking pretty good. Got a few blemishes from Labrador tails, whacking it around and whatnot, but otherwise it's been a sturdy plant, but it should have grown a lot more than this. Not surprised that it hasn't, because look at the size of the container that it's in. This pot is very, very small. It definitely needs an upgrade. That has a nice, thick, chunky starter on it. And look at that. Nice, big, bulky, girthy. Definitely use an upgrade. Just I'm wondering if maybe this might be too much. I think it's fine. By summertime, it will definitely be going into this container. If not, then my Gloriosum will be going into it. I wish that they still sold these. I haven't seen them around in years, but this is a great pot for philodendrons, for any of the crawly types. Fantastic for them. I just, I have to choose between which I think is worthy of this beautiful pot. And I, I think the McDowell would be great. My Gloriosum is still smaller than this so that would be too much of a move probably for it to go from one to the other then the other thing is i don't even i don't even know if i have enough aeroid mix to fill this thing up i'm pretty sure that i don't have enough aeroid mix to fill it up but the thing is with the mcdowell and even the gloriosum back in the day i'm talking like uh it's prior to hurricane katrina uh, this is when i used to see these more often that hurricane changed a lot with the uh, house plants and what was available after that all happened things changed pretty drastically after that. Prior to that, I was like, I don't know, 14 or so, 14, 15. They sold the McDowells and the Goriosums and those things. They're like, you know, 30 to 50 bucks, something like that. Nice big plants in 10 inch containers. But things have really changed a lot. And on the rare occasion that I'd see these plants around at the nurseries and buy them, one major thing has changed for the better. But these generally, when you would buy them, would be in potting soil. A potting mix that was more chunky, had more bark in it normally, or at least lots and lots of perlite, but they weren't in some kind of fancy schmancy 10 different ingredient aeroid mix. I'm not talking about all aeroids, specifically talking about the McDowell and the Gloriosum. Those two, you'd buy them and it was like, oh, these are in potting soil, which is okay if you know how to water your plants and you understand positioning them and how to let them dry out, but that's a risky assumption to make that people just know those things. That all being said, I have grown Goriosums and McDowells in straight up potting mixes that I've just added perlite to so that it drains really well and I never had a problem. But again, I was also very cautious about how I watered the plants and they were generally in pretty shallow containers so that soil would dry out rather quickly. I'm not, I, I don't think I'm, I'm not going to put this in straight up potting mix, but I'm going to have to cut my aeroid mix with potting soil. And that, I don't think that's going to be a big deal. If I, should I even do it? I don't know. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. I think that the smarter thing to do here would be to bump this up into a container that's maybe twice the size, give it a couple more months to put out some roots, and establish itself into that container before making a jump into this one. And then say around probably June, I would move it into this one. And when I do that, it'll be outdoors. It'll be warm, it'll be humid, there'll be rain, and it will establish itself into a larger container much more quickly. It's warm and humid out here, but this time of year, I've talked about this before, I reset my heater to drop cooler at nighttime and I'm not bumping it up quite as high during the daytime. So I'm trying to get the plants hardened off now so that they can be moved outside in the next four to eight weeks. Uh, it's kind of broad, but you just never really know what the weather is going to be like. Generally, they're usually out by mid-May at the latest. There have been a couple years, I think last year, maybe it was the year before, they didn't come out until it was almost June. So we had a really unseasonably cool May. But for the most part, a lot of these plants Maybe not the McDowell, but like the Eureka Palm, the Croton, the Bird of Paradise, a lot of the Dracaenas and Hibiscus, plants where I'm not worried about it dropping into the 30s and 40s at nighttime, they'll be out. But not like the Heliconias and some of the Philodendrons that have just gone up in price quite a bit over the years. Those will be staying in. That's, that's everything that's been going on in my brain in the last few minutes. How's your brain doing? Hopefully I didn't just stress it out too much. That's what I have left of my aeroid mix. Not the end of the world because I usually like to add stuff to it anyways. Normally some sphagnum. I don't think that the McDowell needs any sphagnum moss added to it though. I'm do like a handful of this sandy palm and cactus mix that I have laying around. It's got a lot of chunks in it. Some 
what looks like shredded coconut husk and maybe I have some pumice somewhere. I should. I'm gonna go with bark. Nice big chunky bark that also has some, well, they're calling it pumice. Pretty sure it's styrofoam. Yeah, that's, that, there aren't gonna be any issues with drainage with that. That's gonna be fine. Would like to liven this up some more though. I realized that the tripod wasn't quite on there. You see those really big chunks? That's gonna be plenty airy for a philodendron. In fact, that's gonna be airy enough that I am gonna add some sphagnum. Just get better rootage when there's some moss blended in. There's just something about having all that extra space for the various microbes and fauna to dig in. I wanna richen this up. There's earthworm castings in here. There's kelp meal. There's a tiny bit of compost, but not very much. And just right over here, right next to <laughs> what I'm doing, got a fish tank with some sand and gravel in it. It is very, very nutrient dense. Well, this tripod sucks. I just got a new tripod. My first time using it, I don't like it. Oh yeah, this is good. This is gonna be nice. I'm gonna like the results with this. Got some sand some planted aquarium gravel. All this needs to be moistened up and that moss needs some time to soak too. You can use aquarium substrates like the uh, uh, fluval stratum, stratum, whatever you want to call it. That's not uncommon. People use that with their plants sometimes and have pretty good results. They're just nutrient dense, heat treated pellets. They put them in your fish tanks. They're nice and round so nutrients can flow around them and tend to get really good root growth with those. What I put in here wasn't that fluval product but it was a different brand of planted aquarium gravel. So you have that nice coarse material like you would have just anytime you have stone or pumice in around those roots. The difference though is that there's already nutrients in those tiny little pieces of rock that will break down over time very slowly. Some crummy orchid bark. Look at this. Look at the little stringy bits that were in there. Wouldn't be thrilled with that for orchids, but for a lightening up an aeroid mix, I'm fine with it. This is cool. Definitely not going to be able to mix up enough of this to fill that container. So that rules out that dilemma. I think it probably would have been the wrong move putting it in there anyways. There are a couple of the reasons that I haven't talked about yet. So I'm going to poke around for just a generic plastic pot that's roughly double this size to get that moved around into while the moisture sets in and soaks in on there. Yeah, I'm liking this. I think that that's gonna be a good blend. Oh, this is perfect, a Talavera pot. I love Talavera. Okay, it's not perfect. There are actually a couple of reasons that I shouldn't be using this one, but since it's just going to be for a couple months, I think it's fine. So for one, oh, I just, I try and keep a clean hand and a dirty hand. I just got them both dirty. You can see the inside of this container isn't sealed. So that would mean that those aeroid roots might grip onto there, which doesn't make it fun when it comes to repotting the plant. Also, the top of the container is more narrow than the middle, which looks nice, but that is something I tend to avoid just because it can make repotting the plants a nightmare. I had to break pots before to get plants out. And I tend to not do that these days. Normally I'll just cut the roots of the plant to get it out, but it can be a pain. I don't see the philodendron doing all that in just a couple of months. If I were to try and keep it in here, I would find a pot that fits in here as an insert, a plastic one, and let that go down and just let this be a cash pot. One thing that I'm not gonna say concerned about, but just some self-awareness here. I have a feeling that I'm going to enjoy having the McDowell in here so much that I might overlook repotting it in a couple of months when I should. And that would be a big mistake. Would be a big mistake that I can definitely see happening. I would not put that past myself at all. I've got my new fancy scoop here and I've been using my hands, getting them all covered in dirt, making it so I can't touch my camera this whole time when I could just been using this thing. Okay, that was hopefully the perfect amount. I was going to say that it is the perfect amount, but I can't really say that when I haven't pushed out any air pockets or watered it. And I have a feeling I might need some more stakes to keep this thing in place. Water that in. McDowell was drier than I would prefer it be during a repot. I always like to make sure the plants are very well hydrated when they're getting a repot, but y'all saw how small that container was. There just wasn't much hope for the rehydrating of the plant. The drain, is there, I think the hole's clogged in the bottom of this thing. Yep, okay, off to a great start. All right, okay, no, it's not quite as nice as the long blue pie. I suppose that's, it's a matter of opinion. It's just drastically different. I do love the Talavera pot. So I'm perfectly happy with using the Talavera pot. It's just 
a different vibe, but it's a vibe that I'm happy with. Lots of color. Container itself could use a wash, but so could the other one. I think that this is, this is probably the right way to go, right? Wouldn't you agree? I think that pot is more appropriately sized until this starts to get going some more. You don't really have to worry about getting it into a long container. In two months time, this should be more appropriately sized to move into this pot right here. Would that be two months from now? Yeah, April, May, two, two and a half months, something like that, then this, it should be more fitting and the conditions outdoors will be more ideal for having it in a container that's so large it'll have lots of time outside to get itself established. This is good. I like this, this is good for now. I also really like that soil blend. I'm not crazy about the orchid bark that I used, but it'll do the trick just for making sure that there's nice sharp drainage in there, especially since it's only for a couple months. I don't have to worry about it breaking down too terribly quickly and mucking things up. It's the sand, the sand and gravel I pulled from the tank over there. I, the reason that this tank is even still out here, because you know, all these fish got moved upstairs into my office, into a much larger tank. You see that? You see how choppy this is? What a piece of garbage tripod. It's supposedly the same model as the one that I was replacing, but it doesn't look like it, it doesn't move like it, and it doesn't have the same functions. Neither here nor there. I plan with the gravel and sand that's in that tank was to get it outside, spread all that stuff out onto a tarp and let it bake in the sun for a couple of days. And then I was going to bag it up and keep it to use in my potting mixes because it's just, it's just gold. That stuff that comes out of the aquarium needs to have some sanitation sometimes, but something I worry more about when I'm doing things indoors and outdoors. But it's got the gunk in there. It's got the gunk that's going to help break down, feed the nitrogen and get that nitrogen cycle up and moving, help promote nice healthy root growth. And that's what I want to see. And I do think that just a scoop and a half of that was more than enough. It was nice and gritty. That's what I like. I like some grit in my mixes, help get some nice strong roots. Okay, so the other reason, other than just potentially inappropriately sized, that I didn't want to move the philodendron into this container. That was because I also have to keep in mind that I have tropicals that are going to start rolling in here in the next probably two weeks. Fairly big plant orders. Not that it's a lot of plants, it's that they're large plants. Those have to fit in here for a while. I'm not going to be able to move most of them outside because they are true tropical plants that are coming. They're not going to like the cold. This container that's back here is just going to take up more space right now that's not really necessary. Probably going to have to do some rearranging over here. Maybe get another table set up. I already have a couple Nset Morelii bananas that are going to need some placement over here and some other, like I said, there's just larger plants that are coming in. I have to have some place to put them. That's going to take up space. It doesn't take up space and I would say that that's perfectly appropriately sized at least for a few months on this one. Really for several months it should be fine, but because the inside is not sealed, it's not glazed on the inside, I wouldn't want to keep it in there anyways. And with the top being narrow, I already talked about all that, right? We already talked about all that. All in all, glad to have it done. One of my favorite philodendrons, the Dean McDowell, just a classic, big shiny leaves, lots of texture in on those leaves too. Pretty resilient and vigorous too. Very vigorous actually, as far as these nice big philodendrons with the heart-shaped leaves go. And that's going to do it. I don't really have anything else that I need to get done out here today. And today was the only day I had available for filming. So I hope everybody's doing well. Whatever was going on here, got you caught up with what's going on with Turbo and the spring planter spruced up. That's all good stuff. And hopefully I can get outside next week. So there's a lot of stuff I want to show. It's not like any plantings, but just things have been cleaned heavily so far and some other things, but I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Nobody ever knows what the weather's going to do. So comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on with your house plants? Are they gearing up to be moved outside? Do you even move your house plants outside? I always have. I think they enjoy having a summer vacation outdoors, the fresh air and rain and all that all that fun stuff. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.